send you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today's message, I've entitled it The Fifth Loaf, and I ask you to direct your attention to that picture of the mosaic that's in your bulletin covers. Um, the text is John 6:56. Um, which also finds fulfillment in Jesus' institution of the Lord's Supper later on. But Jesus gives us hard words, doesn't he? He says, whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. And then at the Last Supper, Jesus says, this is my body given for you. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, what a wondrous mystery that you present to us today, whereby we partake of your flesh and your blood, that we may live forever, that we may be drawn close unto you. Create in us, O oh Lord, true faith that we can accept and thrive in this teaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So that site, now we've been going over John 6 the last couple of weeks, we're in the third week of it, it's uh, the very beginning of that chapter, we talk about that miracle of Jesus multiplying the loaves and the fishes. It's well remembered by the faithful and it was soon marked as were many of the holy sites in Israel live a church in the fourth or the fifth centuries. Buildings came and went on that site. They were even abandoned, but they were rebuilt always on that exact same site. And the original altar stone purported to be where Jesus laid the bread and the fish, although chipped away by pilgrims seeking souvenirs, it always remained along with the mosaic that's printed there in your bulletins. Take a look at that image. I can only print black and white, but really, trust me, you don't lose a whole lot by losing the color because it's clear as day as to what this mosaic is depicting. The mosaic is crisp, the theme easily identifiable. Now the strange thing about it is that only four of the loaves can be seen in the basket. And you might ask yourself the question, well, why is that? Why is it that I only see four loaves in that basket? Where is the fifth loaf? Did it fall out of the basket? Was it pictured in some forgotten corner of, the, of an eroded part of this mosaic? Now the mystery, it isn't so hard to solve when you remember that this mosaic was set just in front of the altar there. In fact, some of it is actually under the altar. That's because Christians from every time associated this miracle of the loaves and the fish with the Lord's Supper, or we might also call it the Eucharist. Now think about it. In the account of the miracle, what does Jesus do when the boy sought out by Philip supplies Jesus with the five loaves and the two fish to feed the multitude? What action does he take? He takes the bread, he gives thanks, and had the proceeds distributed. Giving thanks. That word is Eucharist in the language of the New Testament. No wonder we associate this miracle as a sign. A sign foreshadowing the Eucharist Jesus would institute near the end of his ministry on the night in which he was betrayed. The fifth loaf then, where does the fifth loaf reside? The fifth loaf then resides on the altar. To behold the Eucharistic bread, 
The Eucharistic bread is no longer ordinary bread. This bread is connected with powerful and sacred words that Jesus speaks. This is my body. Which Jesus first spoke on the night in which he was betrayed and continues to be spoken by pastors who are called to this task. In Jesus' stead and by his command. It's a strange it's a holy, it's a mysterious, mind-bending, and for some, a deal-breaking thing to say, this is my body. But Jesus' actions in the miracle, and then also his words in the Bread of Life discourse, were a foretelling of that very reality where Jesus says, this is my body. He says in this text in John, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. It's repetitive. There's no way to get around the language of it. Jesus spoke plainly, not metaphorically, poetically, or symbolically. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and you drink of his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh, drinks of my blood, has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. These are hard words. What you simply don't grasp of that two or three pounds of gray matter that are between your ears. You just can't grasp it by your own human reason. It is the Spirit who gives life, Jesus says. The flesh, whose flesh? Your flesh. The flesh, that is, your flesh, the disciples' flesh, our flesh, is of no help whatsoever. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Even if you have all of the philosophical brains of an Aristotle, all the time of a Methuselah, you simply won't grasp what Jesus says in our fallen human condition. We must be called by the Holy Spirit. Wisdom calls out for us to possess the oft-quoted characteristic in our intro, in our Old Testament lesson, the fear of the Lord. The Holy Spirit gives us that fear of the Lord. In the fear of the Lord alone is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom personified as the Holy Spirit calls us through the word. The Holy Spirit creates faith. And only in faith can we then begin that path towards understanding. Ansem of Canterbury, one of the saints listed in our commemorations on April 21st, he coined the phrase, faith seeking understanding. Faith must come first. If, if there's ever to be understanding in Christianity, it's faith has to come first. And the specifics of Jesus' teaching, it only comes first by faith. And then it is a lifelong journey of sanctification where you begin to understand even the hard teachings of Jesus. But you believe the teachings... It's only by faith that we can thrive, heeding Christ's command to eat my body and drink my blood, accepting his words, for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Faith comes first. It's faith which might first come by the word you encounter as Christ. If, if you're an adult coming to the faith, well then that faith is going to come first by the word that you hear proclaimed. Or if you're so fortunate as to have been born into a Christian family, faith comes through the water and the word through holy baptism. 
Faith finds the fifth loaf on the altar. Faith finds Jesus in the sacrament. Seeing by faith today, we see a portal open. This is what's happening today as we celebrate the sacrament. We see the portal open between heaven and earth. Joined by the fulfillment of Jacob's ladder, Jesus Christ, upon whom the angels and ascend and descend. Freely crossing the barrier between heaven and earth. What an awesome thing it is to celebrate the Eucharist today. Most importantly, however, is that Jesus, and I mean the full Jesus, in his flesh and blood, in his soul and in his divinity, transcends that barrier between human life and death, between heaven and hell, the celebration of the Eucharist here and the marriage feast of the Lamb there, we're joined. You know, those who have gone ahead of us, who have died in the faith, they've gone to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we're here having the foretaste of that feast to come, and yet we are joined. What a wondrous thing it is. Those who believe that the bread we take today from this altar, those who believe that it's only a symbol of heavenly reality, or at best spiritual reality, they're missing out. You're missing out if you only see it as a kind of a spiritual thing or as some kind of a symbolic thing. You're missed out because you're being robbed of a mystery. They have been robbed of their physical connection to Jesus, heaven, all the saints, and all the angels. They become susceptible to seeking empty substitutes in their worship. But we have in this sacrament, we have the fullness of Jesus Christ. His body, his soul, his flesh, his divinity. We have the full Christ. He's really present. Now his presence isn't just to be adored, but his presence is for you. Jesus' presence on the altar isn't just something to be adored or marveled at. He gives himself for you. He gives himself for me. That is, to forgive you of your sins, to bestow on you life and everlasting salvation, to strengthen you, pilgrims, to strengthen you, pilgrims, on your journey to the promised land, because that is our purpose, that is our end goal. He strengthens us on the journey to the promised land for the, the fullness of his presence. Jesus said... Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of, the bre of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world, the bread that I give is my flesh. Jesus defines the life he gives through his flesh in very specific ways in this passage. It is not just life, but it is the resurrected life. It is a life lived in a resurrected body. Just like Jesus' body would rise from the dead, we have the hope, my friends, of having that kind of same body, a resurrected body. I will raise him up on the last day, is what Jesus says. Who isn't interested in things like that? I mean, I, I put on Apple News and there's always a big section there how to have a lower, a more youthful biological age or to insert this supplement or that supplement, extend the human life expectancy. But we have something greater than that. Not only do we extend it, we have eternal life forever in the resurrected body. But the problem is that in the world, there 
are we seeking that missing supplement? For the supplement is Christ's flesh offered through that fifth loaf on the altar. But it's a hard saying. It's a hard saying even for Christians. However, by faith we embrace this mystery and we embrace it without question. The narrative reveals that many in stubbornness no longer followed Jesus after that day. Jesus then looked at the twelve and he looks at us also. Are you also going to leave? Jesus asks. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. These are the words of that verse that we sang this morning. May it be our prayer that we respond it with them in sincerity and in truth. The fifth loaf is not missing, but awaits us on the altar this morning. May we take Partake of that flesh of Jesus in the unity of faith, in sincerity, and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.